Cairo, Seattle. It's time to get schooled with a professor, Sean Clayton. Welcome to School with a Professor, and we are going to talk a very different part of the game of football. We're going to talk about long snapping, and you would think it's not too big, but this week in the National Football League, the NFL was concerned so much about the snappers, so much about the guys that get the ball to the kickers that uh, they put a rule in to protect them because Bobby Wagner was jumping over. Uh, the center, that that snapper, same with Cam Chancellor. And so I guess now, I guess with renewed protection that's there, we're joined by Matt Overton of the Indianapolis Colts. Matt, how do you look at this? Was uh, you feel like the NFL now has your back? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm all with, uh, you know, the rules protecting long snappers for sure. Um, especially in, in the sense of, you know, allowing us to get in a position to protect ourselves um, and they've really, over the past few years, it's kind of really evolved to allow that um, the position to be considered, uh, you know, more safe. I guess you can say during the during, throughout the game, and, and allowing us to be in a position to protect protect ourselves when our head is literally between our legs um, every time we're on the field. But um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go kind of against this rule that they changed. Um, I thought it, I thought that it was pretty clever that teams started jumping over the line and, and really, you know. Got got a tip off on their the cadences and whatnot, and and you know it really proved to be a huge play. I know the D- Denver Broncos won a game off it last year. Of course, Seattle has done it numerous times and whatnot. And so we prepared like that uh, as a unit, McAfee, Vinatieri, and I, um, and our coach, our coach Tom McMahon. We practiced that every single day um, throughout the year to really try to eliminate the the jumper. Um, and we really prided ourselves on changing the cadence. We got several teams that jump off sides last year. Um, and, uh, so in that aspect, I, I, I wish they didn't change that. However, I do agree that they need to protect guys and, you know, of course, landing on top of guys and using bodies to, to propel themselves higher or over the line. That should be, should be illegal. Um, but, uh, I guess, you know, we're just going to roll with it and see what happens. And, and I'm still kind of, um, there's a little little gray area. I really don't understand the rule change. Are, are they not allowed to block kicks anymore? Because I, I, the the language that I read really didn't make sense to me. So maybe you can clear that up for me. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be that, uh, you know, it's they're just basically trying to eliminate the jumper. And see, what they said, and of course, now what you said is very popular here in Seattle because uh, you know, <laughs> Bobby Wagner and Cam Chancellor and the fans aren't happy about this rule change. But the explanation that they had, and of course, ironically, they went with the Players Association and the Players Association that was there at the Combine to a man actually uh, said, no, we want that play eliminated. And so what the idea was is that they they had adjusted you know some of the blocking because a lot of this was you know you have the head down at a certain angle and now you have that clear area to jump but now they were moving the guard over a little bit more and now what they felt was the way the adjustments were going on lines during the season it did put players in jeopardy if the guy was blocked and then came down and landed on somebody no absolutely i i totally agree with that um i i just i i like the uh the fact that teams can scheme another team uh and really kind of focus in on their cadence there's a lot of teams when we when we pre- prepare for a team um talking about you know field goal and field goal block um you know a lot of teams go on the same cadence every single time and that's kind of how guys skimmers off the edge can can get a jump or or the jumper you know and so you know i do like the play i really do now i i, I guess i'm kind of on the fence about it you know i i love the fact that the the block or the block point can can occur over the the line of scrimmage and over the center. Um, it's happened to us twice, and it, it, they blocked it on a PAT. And then um, actually one time they jumped too early and you know hit hit McAfee, and and of course that that led to a personal foul. But um, you know it, for me, I guess I would say I was on the fence, and I I think it's it's proven to work. Um, you know, especially in in a clutch moment where the defense needs to block the kick. Um, and it also puts a lot more pressure on us as a, as a specialist unit because, you know, we have to change our cadence up. You know, the kicker has to get the ball up higher. And, and so it really did change the way we prepared and approached certain teams that um, were ha- had already proven that they could jump, like the Patriots and, and those teams, you know. So um, 
I guess you can say, you know, I, I'm all I'm all for uh, player protection for sure. And and the thing that I wish that they would have changed um, was eliminating the the running into the kicker and roughing the kicker. It's 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 been uh, really unclear about how you distinguish the two. Um, you know, last year Vinatieri got he got hit. And it was only a five-yard penalty, or it should have been a rough in the kicker. We should have got a first down, you know, put ourselves in the scoring position. That, and that happened a lot throughout the season. So I wish they would have changed that. You know, if the kicker gets hit, it should be a personal foul. You know, and so um, I think uh, that's something that they should probably uh, look at in the, in the future. Yeah, and I guess, I guess I'm kind of with you, too, that uh, I, when I went to the meeting, my big thing is that why would they want to eliminate an exciting play? Because, you know, the guy can yeah. jump, and it's like, wow, look at what he's able to do. And it's like it's great to see that. But, again, I guess that where the adjustments are and all that, and player safety continues, right or wrong, to be the big issue. And I guess it's right because you want as many players as safe as possible, but sometimes it does take away exciting elements of the game. No, no doubt. And when you, when you put it that way, I'm all for that. Okay, so now that's that's the one thing I guess maybe there isn't as much recognition as there should be of guys that do what you do because you know in a lot of ways here you are on a line of 300 pounders you know 320 pounders maybe a guard at 330 big guys and you know the the snapper is the guy he may only weigh 240 230 I mean you're what 243 and you're sitting there and you know you have to be exposed to be hit when you know that uh, you got your head looking back behind you trying to get the ball to the right place yeah well I, I you know I put a lot of my uh trust in my guards you know they they're they're kind of my anchors in that situation you know and so um, you know, there's certain players that are just notorious for just being great um, rushers up the middle on field goal, um, like the J.J. Watts. And, I mean, I, I, I'm going to talk about Houston. Houston's been they're, – they're a great special teams unit, and they put their starters in on there. So there's J.J. Watt. You have the Vince Wolforks um, and, and those guys who are just monsters in the middle. And, and J.J.'s blocked several kicks in his career so far. And Vince Wolfork, I mean, that guy's 340-plus, you know, going after it, and, and he can get up too. And, uh, so those were, those were definitely, it's definitely difficult, but, uh, you know, we, we prepare to have my guards, you know, help me in that situation and, and really help me gain some leverage, you know, to where I can protect myself. Now there are times when I <laughs> literally get ran over and it hurts and, and it don't feel good. Um, you know, but, uh, over, over time and over the course of my career, I've learned to kind of how to, uh, you know, quickly brace myself for that impact. Yeah, I mean, how do, what, what do you have to mentally do to prepare? Because, again, you have no ability and no chance to be able to protect yourself because, I mean, your mission is to get the ball back and then anything that happens, happens. I mean, what, what do you have to try to do mentally and physically to handle that? Well, you know, honestly, like, I, I think it's more of a feel. It's hard to really explain, but it's more, it, more has just come with experience in, in the field of the game. And, um, you know, there's been a few plays in the course of my career where I've been able to run my feet through a jumper and flip them over the line. And those guys hate that. I mean, they get so mad at me, you know, and, um, and so that kind of discourages them from continuing to do that, you know, and we have guards that do the same thing. And there's a lot of teams across the league that, you know, coach that stuff. I mean, if they're going to jump over, over you or, or whatnot, cut their legs out, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's legal. You know, and so, um, you know, I, I like to pride myself on that and run my feet and embrace myself. But I think it just comes with, with, with uh, experience. And, and it's really, like I said, it's hard to explain. Obviously, I have to get my the snap back there perfect to the holder and, and whatnot and do and do that and make that perfect every single time. But, um, yeah, man, I, kinda, I love going against, the, you know, those guys that like to jump, man, because I'll, I'll try to flip them. What, what what got you into snapping and you know explain what this fraternity is because I mean you're you're out there you know a limited number of plays you don't get a chance to protect yourself and if you make one mistake then all of a sudden your job's in jeopardy. Well, I mean, I, I fortunately inherited the position way back in high school. My coaches made me do it because I played center on the offensive line and I played every position on the line and linebacker and fullback and D line all throughout high school and in college I was linebacker and defensive end too and I stepped still continue to work on the craft of long time because every coach I had, you know, was like, man, you're, you're pretty good at this. There's not a lot of people that can do it. So you might as well continue to pursue it. And I, and I did that, you know, and um, definitely self-coached. I never had anybody to really mentor me because it really wasn't, 
you know, relevant. It wasn't a big issue. I mean, um, and, and like colleges weren't giving scholarships to players for just long snapping. Uh, guys in the NFL were, were tight ends, linebacker, offensive linemen to do it. Um, and, you know, this, the specialists have really just continued to grow um, in skill every single year. Even, you know, you can look at McAfee, you know, really changing the game with his abilities. And, of course, Vinatieri being the best ever to do what he's done. He's going in his 22nd year, you know, and, and the level of, of those positions have just continued to grow and, and long snapping especially too. Um, there's camps for kids to go to now and, and every school is offering a scholarship now and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I have to continue to keep working on my craft and really, you know, and, and, and growing and, and really honing in on my skills and whatnot and refining everything. And so up to this point, you know, I, I'm still working on my protections, you know, blocking those defensive ends and linebackers and like you mentioned 300 pounders is really really hard especially when you have a disadvantage with your head between your legs you know so um those are things that i'm working on to to really continue to build um that consistency in in that aspect of of my protection and blocking um and then i I like to pride myself on running down the field and making a play too and, and not shying away from contact and and making tackles you know and so um it it's interesting man that they it's it's great to see you know the the competition out there. I mean, these, there's some there's some great specialists you know coming out of college nowadays. You know, and so um, we always have to you know keep on working to get better um, together. And uh, you know, it's unfortunate to lose McAfee, you know, our, our trio man, our fourth down army. But you know, we got a great veteran and Jeff Locke coming in. And so um, you know, we're just uh, we're we're eager to get together here in the next couple of weeks and, and when OTA starts to start working. But um, you know, for me, it's been it's been it's been a long journey, man. Really refining my skill, and 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 actually, you know, I've, I've reached out to Justin Snow, the former Indianapolis Colts long snapper, and and he's helped me a lot. He's been a mentor to me, so it's been great having a guy like that to uh, um, to work with and actually have a set of eyes on me while I practice, uh, you know, from somebody who knows what to look for. And so, um, yeah, man, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. What what do you have to do? I mean, because obviously it's almost like a golfer trying to hit a sweet spot every time and hit it perfectly. I mean, what do you have to do as far as getting the spin right, getting the angle right, and getting it back so that uh, you know each and every time is going to be in the right place for whoever's getting the ball? Yeah, man, it's really like muscle memory. Um, you know, it's just uh, I'm always working on my velocity and velocity and accuracy and all that stuff, and and, and really being consistent. You know, you're going to have a bad practice. You're going to have, you know, a poor snap in the game every once in a while. But it's all about how you bounce back. It's just like golf. You know, it really is very, very similar. You have, you know, every every snap is critical. And every shot in golf is critical. So having that mindset and approaching it, you know, one snap at a time is, is really important. That's what I've learned over the course of my career. And, um, and when it comes to, like, field goal, um, you know, just working with that holder and that kicker to really get on the same page. And it's all about the distance, really. Um, as long as I throw the same pitch, same snap every single time, and you know we're at that same distance, the holder should be able to catch that, catch that ball with the laces facing out, you know, pretty consistently. And so, it just comes down with timing, um, you know, and obviously working diligently uh, with those guys every single day. What? Because uh, I know I, I I detested the rule change last year when they actually had extra points at the 15 yard line because I thought it was unnecessary. I didn't see any reason why that had to happen. I know it was a, you know it's like uh, it, it's a league where sometimes where your excellence now has to be penalized because it's not exciting. What was your reaction uh, when they took the extra points and how do you think it's going? Because again, they approved it more at the owners' meeting this week for one more year that extra points will be at the 15 yard line, making it almost like a 33 yard field. Gold. I mean, it is just that. It's a 33-yard 33, 33 field goal, and, and a lot of teams, you know, put on the left hash or the right hash. We we stay in the middle. That's where Vinatieri likes it. Um, you know, but it really, it's a game changer. It really is. I mean, it's it's not that easy chip shot, you know, and teams are actually rushing it every single time. As as before, you know, the PAT, it was just kind of like, oh, here we go. You know, this is, you know, automatic, right? And it, and it Dang near was it was ninety eight percent or whatever it was you know and so um, it's definitely proven to change big time you know I mean there was several I mean I remember one of the weeks last last year where I mean there was like I don't know fifteen missed PATs in one week you know and so it definitely has changed I know I know Vinatieri hates it you know yeah. but you know it's it, they've they've kicked up, they've changed the kickoff rules too and so they've they've tweaked some of our special teams. Um, 
you know, plays over the past couple of years. And, you know, it's, it's like there's nothing really we can do about it. Obviously, you know, our guys that represent us in the PA can go and, and fight for it and whatnot. But uh, it's almost like, man, we just got to adapt and adjust and move forward. And But, uh, you know, definitely moving the PAT back to the 15-yard line is definitely a game changer because people don't realize that, you know, you go down in December and January and February and, and you know, that, that last stretch of the season into the playoffs and you're, you're battling – you know, the weather and, and all that kind of stuff and field field conditions. And, I mean, dude, it, it can really, really change the game. And it has, you know. And so um, I guess, you know, having that rule change has, has proven um, uh, to, you know, change the game in that in that way. Oh, yeah, because I know that, uh, Stephen Hauschka, you said that, you know, what you have to do now, because, I mean, if you're seeing your offense driving the ball down the field, I mean, there's a pattern as far as, you know, when you start to kick, when you loosen up and do all these different things. But if you're, you'll get a quick score that you didn't anticipate a 70 yard touchdown or an interception return for a touchdown, you don't get that same prep if you're the kicker trying to get, and even you as a snapper trying to get that timing down from the sidelines because, like, oh, go do it. No, I, absolutely, man. That, that, those, those, uh, you know, change of possessions like that are, are are tough. You know, especially when you're literally sitting on the bench and they take a pick six to the house, and now you're scrambling to run and find your helmet and then run on the field, kick a PAT, man. Especially now, like you mentioned, how she's saying, you know, now you're kicking a 33 yarder. You're not just kicking that 21 yard or whatever it was before. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely game changer and it keeps us on our feet all the time, man. We have to be on our toes and ready for anything. Yeah, in fact, I, all I know is I, I started doing some sideline stuff for ESPN Radio uh, this year, and you know they say, oh, you get worried about getting hit on the field. No, my biggest worry is getting in the way of the long snapper and the kicker when, when they're trying to get ready right oh, over there yeah, by the net. Yeah, don't do that, man, because we're worth throwing zingers back there, man. Oh, I know. And, and I've hit ball boys. I've hit I've hit team doctors. I've hit trainers. I've hit other teammates. Um, it's hilarious, man. But yeah, you definitely don't want that to happen. Um, you know, and it, it is tough because we're literally McAfee and I were literally warming up the entire. We're staying warm the entire game. Every time that we had the ball, we're warming up, and we we need that space. You know, preseason makes it tough because you got ninety guys on the sideline plus staff and everything. It's a nightmare, and uh, and of course Vinatieri is always in the net where whatever uh, whatever side of the field we're on, but uh, or whatever direction we're kicking. You know, and so, um, yeah, that's you definitely don't want to get in the way because I've, I've hit people in the head. You know, I've, I've hit people, you know, it, where the sun don't shine and it hurts, man. So uh, <laughs> definitely got to watch out for that. Hey, Matt Overton, great uh, talking to you and great talking about long snapping. It's good to see that the NFL is trying to protect, but uh, I know it still takes away a fun play. No, I love it, man. And, and thanks for having me on and uh, much respect to you, man. That's it for this week's edition of Schooled. You can follow me on Twitter at Clayton ESPN. Thanks for listening. Class dismissed.